in the office. The males could do the trim, they said, not compatible with how to work. But later, in the ladies, safely seated, elbow on her knee, she unclung her fingers one by one and marvelled at her nose, their uncut, rugged length. Yet she did as she was told, and once home, dug out a manicure set, a freebie from some forgotten flight, and began to fire and rub them till they tapered long and thin and gleamed like pearls. How good they felt came to that in her chin. Now she paid a different chin upon a keypad, and thrilled that they should crane their necks to see who made that sound. If she caught their eye in narrow slits, because their faces became strongly inebriated, she smiled, and very soon at lunch, they queued beside her desk for her to peel away the skin from her satsumas and listen to their chats of holidays, weekend joys, and near disasters. And yet, if she herself should leave her desk, they kept their heads down while she passed. Some would slide their hands between their knees to reach inside their handbags for their compacts, and in each tiny glass would watch her lean reflection of her softly bar in kitten hands. One theory was that she got hungry. One hot and muggy night in June, she knelt before her window, arched and dipped her back and stretched towards the moon. Perhaps it was a tickle that caused her hand to fall in her fur and find a tiny tear, a split. She got some more and fancied lines of yellow and bronze and wheat where she could stride through stripes of ticking grass. Then, leaping up to lay his arm on the thick branch of the tree, she heard the breath of shadow swing below. She felt each sinew string herself into a knot, her nails dug in the bark, half hidden. By the leaves, she looked down one arm and lay down the other, teasing with its attention, fixing her gaze of her amber eyes, mirroring her own. In the morning, she rose late, thoroughly showered, and got into the other house to clean her throat and fit up the first muggy minute. Giving birth! It's a fucking curse. <laughs> 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 Throw our arms wide, we bite the busy bee boys to tie our sweet nectar. After which the breeze picks up, we'll nod to each other when our fair petals drop, blush at our swelling buds, our ripening fruit, and just let the puppies fall. Or down under, like a keg root, belly up, snoozing the sun while our gaping horns blow bubbles, gum, keep jelly green, blindly finding their way to our pockets. <laughs> to where we left off, leave them to grope for a toot. Think nothing more of it till one by one they hop out, shake hands, fully grown. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you grogs. In a swollen with spawn in an emerald pond, happily still while you hop on our backs, groping her ears, deep throated promises. Ripped by your silky green thighs. <laughs> we'll bubble up eggs from under our skirts. <laughs> and you put a dot in the end. It didn't seem to mention enough to me. Because there's always a feast. And to be honest, I do not love you with my eyes. You are a perfection. In any case, I could grow sick of recipes for lovely and innocent. The things I love about you, others might despise. Some may fault to know how much still I have for your love, how hungry I grow with your head in my lap, so could break one, or judging greedy to pick between your pretty teeth and flood upon your tongue, stained with black currant swallows fizzing like cookie sticks, or even piggish scratching your hair with my chin while you drool nicotine. So shut out the light with your shoulders. Bruise the skin of my mouth like late apples. Press them blindly into mine and take each nipple onto your tongue like fat raffles. And suck me like a fig. Take a line. 